Good morning, everybody. How are you? It's Uncle Bruce here. Stock Markets with Bruce from Creston, British Columbia in Canada, your neighbor to the north if you're down in the U.S. Welcome one, welcome all to the show today. It is May the 6th, 2021. And another day in paradise, what can I say? Uh, what, what you want to know about at GameStop and what I'll talk about this morning, the bottom line is this. Uh, there's a there's a congressional hearing today, um, and everyone uh, in the media, for convenience sake, is calling it the GameStop hearings. But here's the reality: GameStop is not at the hearings. The GameStop hasn't been at any of the hearings. This is the third one now. Is this the third one? GameStop management uh, have not been brought in, and they will not be brought in because this is not a GameStop hearing at all. What this is a hearing about is. The brokerage business, the investment business is being investigated on how they handled the trading of GameStop shares and the handling of BlackBerry shares and and, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond shares and AMC shares and all the other meme stocks. That's what it is. It's not a hearing about Reddit. They're not having a hearing about Wall Street bets. Those people aren't on trial. They're not in trouble. There's no congressman trying to outlaw internet sites where we talk about stocks. Don't get sucked into this narrative. That's not what it is. The chairman of the SEC is there today. Is Gary Gensler the new guy? It's his first time in front of the committee as chairman. They're going to grill him, uh, especially the Demo- the Republicans. They're going to try to grill this guy. He's been there two weeks. Uh, he wasn't the chairman when the stock did what it did, by the way, with GameStop in January. He wasn't the chairman. That, 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 that chairman's gone. That Republican-nominated Trump guy is gone. Uh, you want to talk to what happened in the market when that – got to talk to the people who were running it at the time, and they're not – I don't think they're in front of Congress today. I don't think so. So it's not a GameStop story. It's it's a GameStop-related story, but it's not a GameStop story. Um, I have to commend, actually um, – CNBC this morning, they interviewed a, a congressman, a Republican, uh, who's on the committee. And uh, they, uh, Joe Kernan went into this GameStop uh, bias about, well, you know, uh, the committee is going to have a meeting today, and I guess you're going to talk about what happened with GameStop and uh, how the corporation is running it. He said, no, it's not about the corporation. We're not here for the corporation. We're not here to talk about GameStop, the company. What they're doing is, is corporately is their business, and, and they're doing what they have to do for their shareholders. And Kernan kind of said, well, you know, Got to admit, the stock didn't go back to 20 bucks a share. I got to say, and it's kind of hanging around this 160 level is pretty good. No, shush, no, no kidding. <laughs> no poop, no poop, Joe. Um, yeah, uh, you know what I want to say. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, the bias in the media against GameStop is just never ending. It is just vitriol. It is just so baked in, uh, they can't contain themselves. They just want to jump on GameStop so badly and and just, uh, just uh, it's pathetic is what it is. It's just pathetic. What can I say? The bottom line for you guys on AMs, uh, on, games, on GameStop, the bottom line on GameStop, last night the, or yesterday afternoon, their credit rating was improved by, uh, lifted by the S&P. Now, some of you are like going, well, so what? What, why should I give a damn, Bruce? Why do I need to care about this crap? I'll tell you why. Um, this is the kind of stuff that stockbrokers, former stockbroker, guys like us pay attention to, to this stuff because we know the ramifications of an upgrade or a downgrade, what they really are. And a lot of you out there have no clue what S&P or, or, or uh, other rating agencies, upgrades or downgrades mean to public companies. Uh, in the case of GameStop, some of you were, were wise enough and, and astute enough to mention on this show that uh, when the company paid off their, their loan, their long-term loan last week or on the 30th of April, you some of you figured out, you know what this means. A bunch of covenants have been lifted on the company um, under the deal they had with that debt deal they had, the 10% loan they were paying for $217 million or whatever it was. Um, not only did they have to pay the 27 million a year, uh, 20 million a year in interest, obviously 20, 20 plus million in interest. They also were restricted in what they could and could not do financially because the banker, uh, uh, set it up in such a way that they were first in line for cash, that shareholders were behind the banker. If they wanted to do a special dividend or any kind of a dividend, 
not until I'm paid out. You're not, you're not hanging out. You're signing over authority to us that you, you have committed and, 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 and have committed your company to no dividends to any shareholder as long as you owe us money. You also cannot do a takeover. You cannot issue stock from your treasury and buy another company. There were all kinds of restrictions placed on this company. Tons. Those are all gone now. Those are all gone. That deal is a signed off deal. That loan doesn't exist anymore. The company is free to do whatever the heck they want. On top of the fact that they just raised 551 million additional cash to now be sitting on about 950 million, almost a billion bucks. The company is completely different financially today than they were two weeks ago. A month ago, they were they were they, they didn't have this kind of cash. Um, but the S and P uh, uh, upgrade. Um, this is interesting. Now, Standard and Poor's, uh, uh, and then there's also another outfit uh, at the moment. This name escapes me. There's another rating agency. They will likely also upgrade the company's uh, financials by um, lifting the credit rating of the company and taking the company off what is called Credit Watch. They were on a, sort of a warning list to pension funds, mutual funds, and other bankers and institutions where the rating agency was saying, look, um, we're putting these guys on credit watch because they had to sign a loan deal with lenders at 10% interest in a world where the prime rate is two, two and a half percent. Um, we're just putting it out there. They've done that with all the cruise lines. All the bonds issued by cruise lines right now are junk bonds. Every single bond ever issued has been downgraded by the ratings agencies moors uh, moody's moody's is the other one here standard poors and moody's they downgraded all cruise ship bonds to junk gamestop bonds would have been junk rated had they wanted to issue more but they couldn't issue more because they were on credit watch and it also meant that a number of hedge funds a number of mutual funds a number of etf funds a number of index funds would not buy GameStop stock because they were on credit watch with S&P. There's no rule out there, there's no law saying that just because a company's on credit watch, um, a mutual fund can't buy the stock. It's, it's basically internal, um, the internal uh, rules that a mutual fund sets when it creates itself and goes to the public with a prospectus to say, hey, public, we will offer you um, uh, shares in our mutual fund. You can buy units in our mutual fund. But these are the rules and covenants that we operate under. Now, one mutual fund might say, we only invest in bonds. Another mutual fund says, we only invest in U.S. publicly traded companies. Another one says, we only invest in uh, dividend-paying companies. Uh, companies. Others are, we, we invest our money and track the Dow Jones uh, 30 industrial or the S&P 500, or we're a retail, we follow retail stocks. We're growth oriented. We're into the computers. You know the mutual fund business. If you, if you don't, it is so widely varied along with ETFs. There's an ETF and a mutual fund for everything. All right. So if you're into shorting stock, you're into uh, takeovers, you're into IPOs, you're into uh, whatever kind of part of the market you want to be into, there's probably, probably a mutual fund or an ETF for you. Uh, but they all have their fees and their management expenses and all, and you have to decide for yourself whether you want to be into these deals or not. Some of these are in-house deals, like uh, they're in-house ETFs or mutual funds that are run by the big investment houses, and others are independently run uh, funds that are out there that are not involved with an investment bank. They are their own entity. In any event, Every one of these guys, every single fund, of which there are probably thousands, certainly globally, thousands, they all have their own internal rules and restrictions as to what they will not go into. And many, many of them, and I mean thousands of the thousands of them, have uh, one of their little covenants is we will not invest in companies that are on credit watch. We will not invest in companies that have junk bonds. We will not invest in companies that are, you know, uh, under the watchful eye of the credit agencies because they could be shaky. This this is standard business uh, everywhere. Uh, but what we're talking about here and what I'm trying to get to you is it could well be that trillions, with a T, trillions of dollars of funds cannot invest in GameStop until today where up until today, they were forbidden. 
to be able to buy common stock of GameStop if they wanted to. It's not like now they have to. There's no rule saying, you know, now you must buy GameStop now. No, they're all free to do what they want. But one of the covenants that held them back has been removed. And it's a big one. This is big. When a credit agency removes a company from a restriction list and they actually come out and say, you know, they raised $551 million of additional cash. They now have over $900 billion in, in hand. These guys are converting the company from brick and mortar to e-commerce. They have the money to do so. This kind of statement from a credit agency is a big deal a really big deal. It will make no headlines in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Um, it will make no headlines on CNBC. Uh, you will get no help from massive media exposure. This is a, one of those little things that <clears throat> guys like me <clears throat> and stock analysts, uh, hedge fund uh, operators, mutual fund managers, um, um, every mutual fund in the world is aware that yesterday GameStop was taken off the the, uh, the credit watch list. That was huge, and it, it just it's just uh, solidified the company to a much higher level of respectability and stableness. Much much more stable looking company. So now, going forward, as Mr. Cohen does what he does and brings in his CEO and announces the first quarter financials and has their annual meeting and <clears throat> builds out their fulfillment center and. Pennsylvania maybe announces another fulfillment center somewhere else and they shut stores down. These funds, of which again, there are thousands of them with all of their internal analysts, they all have their own analysts, they all can look at GameStop every month and take another look at it, take another look at it, take another look at it. Has the company moved down the road to respectability, to solid, to, 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 to solid base to a point where you know what? We gotta we gotta consider the stock in our portfolio. We have we operate forty five different mutual funds. One of those funds is a small retailer fund, or it is a uh, e commerce uh, mutual fund, or it is a uh, electronic games uh, computer uh, online seller, whatever they're called. There's a gazillion versions of them out there, <clears throat> and it could be there's a, there's a mutual fund out there with sixty different funds, and five of the funds could buy into GameStop. And they have their little meetings every month and say, well, what companies are we dumping from our fund and what companies are we going to pick up? And uh, you get into these high growth, uh, the high growth speculative funds, and there's a ton of those. And a bunch of these guys are going, you know, we couldn't buy GameStop last month, but we can this month. They're off the restricted list. Uh, well, why, why would we want to buy them? Well, look what they're doing over here. And um, you never know. GameStop could start getting picked off and picked up by long, long-term funds that are just going to buy up the stock here, especially on dips. They might pick up this stock and, and the shorters, this is another a little cut, another death by a thousand cuts for uh, short sellers. This is another cut that was inflicted yesterday. They kind of went, oh, ouch, got hit again. Another little knife cut came through here. Yeah, because the GameStop story is getting less and less speculative. It's getting less and less shaky. It's getting less and less. Oh, they could go to business. No, no, that's not the that's not the talk anymore. With almost fifteen dollars a share cash in the bank, they're not going out of business at all. With a billion bucks lying around, uh, they're not going out of business. It's a question of how big are they going to get? How, what's their growth curve going to be like? Have they turned it around? Is the question. And if they have, how fast are they turning this around? And where, where what's the upside on this thing? And that's what the new CEO is all about. We're going to find out who that is. And that individual will likely then be the spokesperson for the company for a while, along with Mr. Cohen. And um, they're going to, I think, be very aggressive in letting all of us know where they're at and where they're headed. Again, thank you all of you for, for uh, being here and asking these questions. I appreciate it.